Right. I read somewhere uh, that your that your OnlyFans is making a million a month. Is that uh-huh. accurate or no? I think my quote was that in general I make like around a million a month. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it was like. It's funny because I feel like every I've, I've never really like said anything about how much money I make, and I wanted to say it on this one. It was like a business podcast, right? Yeah. And I just wanted to throw that number out there. And it's not like we are actually like making that every month, or it's like obviously there's a lot of expenses, a lot of things that go into shit in general. Like anybody can tell you that their business <laughs> is not the net amount that they bring in that sure. month or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Dude, I, it's it's shocking. How fucking little remains after all the overhead and, and the taxes. taxes and Jesus fucking. Christ, yeah. Welcome to paying 50% in taxes. It's yeah, right. man. It's a, a of, whole thing. There's a lot of girls making money on OnlyFans that weren't making money before. And it's yeah. like, dude, what about all these chicks that are like making a fuckload of money? Like, are they paying taxes? Like, you got yeah. care- Like, nobody's telling them to, like, well, you know. hopefully they are, because for sure your OnlyFans revenue is being reported very transparently to the government once you transfer it into your bank account. Yeah. But yeah, like, I mean, the only reason I wanted to say that is because, you know, in my world, the rap world, it's like rappers feel totally fine telling you, hey, I, I made 200000 for playing a show last night, or I made 50000 right. for doing a walkthrough, or I just dropped this album and I made a million bucks, whatever. And it's like, as a media person, you're kind of expected to never do that. And the reality is, is that I kind of like look at the up and coming generation of YouTubers and I want to like inspire them or at least let them know what's possible. So I, I kind of like felt like airing that number out and I just picked that number to just give like a sort of oversimplification. But just because I want these kids who do YouTube videos and shit to know that it's like, yo, if you're making five grand a month right now, I mean, there's possibility. Like I was in that position too and I grinded my ass off and built my business into something way crazier, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I heard you guys uh, when I went in there talking about Steve will do it and, you know, getting canceled on YouTube. But mm. his overhead doesn't stop, you know? And so if part of his YouTube, he's not making that much well, money right, anymore. Right. I mean, the, the dynamic with Steve will do it that's so fascinating to me is that here he's throwing around so much money, but that's his shtick you know yeah. that like outside of throwing around so much money like what content is he going to be really putting out so he got kind of like I, I almost think trapped in that lifestyle of throwing around money because that's what sort of you know his career is but so. the thing with him is that he never made any money off YouTube ads so that was never a concern in the first place it's all about merch and then sponsors like primarily the fucking gambling sponsors I think is like a huge percentage of his yeah. sure. income and him not having a YouTube channel really shouldn't totally change that because you still have Instagram TikTok whatever like he could still make the same content he was making and just put it on TikTok and Facebook and stuff obviously that's going to be a compromise because it sucks to lose your 5 million subscribers subscribers or whatever but like i really think that if he just like dedicates himself that he'll be able to make it so that him having a youtube channel doesn't really matter but he's gonna definitely have to be creative and yeah i mean like i've always felt like that watching all these people give away so much money it's like it is inspiring and it's heartwarming and stuff but then at the same time you're like is is this work in the long run to make a youtube video that you make 10 grand on and you're spending 100 grand in the video like me just as like a person who was broke not that long ago i'm just like i I just doesn't make me feel comfortable right Mm. me me too and um i think that there's different approaches to it like i look at at david dobrik and the way that he throws around a lot i think david dobrik is highly strategic Mm. you know and like every time david dobrik gives away a car i feel like it's actually a sponsor giving away the car i think and more like, often than not yeah yeah so i just think that david dobrik is uh considerably more savvy mm. and uh and you know not to say that i mean i just don't know steve will do it's just a fucking mystery man he's so fascinating and i, I, I love the guy i've always been worried about him as long as i've known him <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just because you have been around long enough, and me to a certain extent too, or you've seen so many people make ten million dollars and then fuck up ten million dollars, so it's right. like, but but younger people they see somebody making a million bucks a month or whatever, and they're like, oh, he's rich and he's gonna be rich forever. Right. We we know how easy it is to fuck that up. I mean, I haven't really done it, but like I've seen other people do it, and I know what it looks like. So I, that's why I'm so thankful that I managed to like 
grind my ass off through my 20s and early 30s and then only started to see success once I already had like eaten shit so many times (laughs) and had the world just fucking spit in my face so many times so that by the time I finally started getting to it I was cautious you know right and like we were saying on your podcast about just not feeling the need to be uh, extravagant in your lifestyle you know like I think that clip was awesome but not as awesome as my new book, A Hard Kick in the Nuts, What I've Learned from a Lifetime of Terrible Decisions, which is out September 27th. And if you pre-order it right now, you can get the autographed copy. So get on it, man. Pre-order my book. It's not going to waste your time because I'm proven, dude. New York Times bestseller. My first book's five-star rated on Amazon. And I have no doubt this one will be too. So get the autographed copy right now by pre-ordering it at stevo.com. Yeah, dude.